for lesson six, we're going to start in SolidWorks. And the reason we're going to start over here is uh, in future lessons, we'll talk about uh, the SolidWorks connector or how things work with 3D Experience SolidWorks as far as the additional things you get when it comes to programming in Delmia. Uh, but one of the things that we want to start with is simple geometry like coordinate systems. So when we start putting parts into Delmia and we want to place them in machines or like you saw in lesson four, being able to click and, and manipulate those in, in on a fixture plate, one of the things that we do have to have is a coordinate system. Or you can have multiple coordinate systems, but um, creating a physical coordinate system in SolidWorks is very important to what we use in Delmia because we use that for positioning and placement. Uh, you know, in SolidWorks, we can do mates of faces and things like that. But as we all know, when revisions happen, geometry changes. <clears> the <throat> one of the things that comes up sometimes is face IDs change. So a a more bulletproof process is to use a coordinate system. So in this part that we're going to use for lesson six, uh, I wanted to make sure that everyone understood that we did put an actual coordinate system in the part. I could put multiple coordinate systems in here, uh, you know, one for op one, op two, op three, op four, whatever I'm going to do. And then I can use those coordinate systems when I place uh, the manufacturing product into my machine or into fixtures and tooling and things of that nature. So when we talk about coordinate systems, what we're talking about is actually creating a feature that is a coordinate system, not the original origin of the part, but the actual coordinate system, you know, and coordinate systems are under, you know, reference geometry right here. So in a later lesson, we'll talk about the connector and being able to use sketches and planes and some of the other geometry that comes in. But for today, we're just going to focus on the coordinate system. So we'll jump over to Delmia. And I already have the part imported and you'll notice when the part imports, it comes with a coordinate system. Now, again, I'm not using the connector at this point, but we're just using, you know, direct import. There are some settings uh, that we'll look at here that turn on the coordinate system. So if I go to actually we will go this way. Uh, there's an easier way to find it. So if I go to preferences and then I go to legacy preferences under general compatibility there's an area for SolidWorks and there's a data to import you can do exact and then you want imported reference geometries points axes plane when you have this turned on then what happens is if I have things like a coordinate system or an external plane created that geometry will then get imported if I just do you know import SolidWorks file um, so that's how we got to this point here. And again, look at the earlier lessons is on how to actually do the import. The other thing that we're going to use today is instead of a generic machine like we've been using up to this point, um, this is a machine I have in my shop. It's it's one of the machines. It's a it's Tormach router. But in the machine, I have kinematics and how things can move. But I also have a coordinate system here. And this coordinate system is actually where I can mount the part on the machine. So if I had, you know, multiple areas I could mount around the table, I may have multiple uh, work mounts or workpiece ports uh, that I can then snap the part to and, and place it around on the table. But there, are, there is a, a method to set up the machine. You only have to set it up once, but you can set up the ports and then from there we can leverage it. So there's, there's a few things going on today, but I sort of want to show you the process. And the, the first thing we have to start with is a part with a coordinate system. So with that said, I'm going to go through quickly and set this up like we've done in the previous lessons with the part open. I'll go to the compass, scroll down and we'll pick our shop floor machining app, which is part of shop floor programmer. We'll get that dropped in our PPR here. And then once we have this, our next thing we're going to do is instead of generic machine, we're going to do mount and import resources. You may remember us, you remember us using that from lesson four when we created multiple setups. Um, we can do the same thing here. So what I'm going to do is click mount and import resources. It's going to ask me to grab a resource. 
So for this example, I'm just going to click my router. That drops the machine in and you'll notice now my part is also dropped in here. So to place this part in the correct direction, this is where we go to what we did in lesson four, where we do uh, import the manufacturing product. Then we can click the item. It's going to ask for a coordinate system. So I pick the one that I imported and then I click where I want to mount it. And then from here, I can do my rotation and movement like I normally would. So if I want that to be 90, and if I wanted to slide that over, I could then slide it over. If I double click, it accepts it. If you remember from lesson four, if I want to continue to make edits to that, I can then uh, always click on it. As long as Mountain Import Resources is open, I have the ability to continue to move that around the screen. Once I get it to the position I like, I'll close out of this. And in this instance, through my clicking, I actually added a second one. So I'm just going to delete the delete one of these just so that way I have the standard component that I'm working with. You'll notice my coordinate system is also down here. I'll fix that here in just a second when I go through, you know, and build the stock and do all the normal things here. So we'll go to our wizard, our wizard and our next step is going to be part operation or actually creating the stock. So we'll start using some of the things from the toolbar down here at the bottom. Um, that also align with the wizard. So I'm just going to pick rough stock, pick my component, pick the part, create standard stock, and then come over here, double click on my part operation. If you see this where it's asking for a setup, no worries. I can just come over here and assign it to the setup that I want. There we go. We'll click our second setup. Pick our part. We'll move our coordinate system. So we'll move that up to a position that makes sense. And on this machine, I'll move this dialog over here. On this machine, the X is along this direction. So if I select OK, our X and Y is actually in this orientation. So X is the short way, line, Y is the long way on this machine. Now, when I was going through the part operation, one thing that happened here is I had multiple setups actually assigned. And I was originally on setup one because I had two different uh, products in here. So what I did is I actually just deleted that first one and then just kept my setup two. Uh, so it, every once in a while, if you have multiple setup operations, you have to make sure that you have the right operation with the right uh, machine. It, it's no big deal. Uh, it's just one of those things to keep an eye out for. So once we have our stock and our part and everything else we've always been doing, our next step is to do the same thing that uh, we're used to, which is we, we import or create a tool and then we put tool paths on and then we machine it. So what I'm going to do for this lesson is I'm going to go to my wizard and I'm just going to import a cutting tool from the database. Uh, and you can do this as well. Once you have once you've created a tool, it exists in your database automatically. So then you can always go and search for uh, any tool that you've created. If you remember before, we had lesson one, lesson two, lesson three. You can see in here I have a whole bunch of different tools that I've created, um, some turning tools, some mill tools. And if I wanted to narrow that down, I can do a search. Let's say, see if I got anything that's an eighth inch or a 125. Uh, you can see here I have hog noses with 125 on them. Uh, I can also search for, 
let's say hognose. And you can see I have 45 different hog noses in here. Um, we'll just use this one here, eighth inch hog nose. It's also important to note too, I can actually use my tags over here, which is always a good thing. <laughs> um, but for this instance, just to show you like the basic searching that happens here. So all the tools that you create over time, you if you name them in something that makes sense to you, you have the ability to quickly and easily search and add those tools to your library or add them to your PPR as you work. Uh, none of the information you created is actually ever gets uh, lost. So now you can see I have an eighth inch hog nose here. So once we have that, we're going to go to surface machining. We'll just pick our roughing and we'll just do uh, an area clearance type operation. So I'm going to click here. wants me to click the assembly. So I'll click a, an assembly here. You can see it comes in. I can give it a direction if that's what I want. Now it's going to ask for a manufacturing feature. I don't have features defined in this one like we did in previous lessons. So I'm just going to say I just want to machine the part. And then if I wanted to put in limiting contours and, and things of that nature, I can. I could also set you know, bottom depth so it doesn't machine all the way to the table. If I wanted to stop short, um, I could say I want to go from there and I want to go down a negative one inch. I don't know where that's going to leave me right now, but um, we'll look here and see where that's going to be. And then for our machining mode, it'll be by area 50%. Yeah, that should work all right. And then hit save quick. And most of the creating of the operations, uh, everybody's familiar with by this point in the lessons. You know, I'm not going to go over every detail of setting step over, step down, feeds in, lead in, lead out, that kind of stuff. So you can see if I go down one inch, uh, I'm machining everything on the inside. Because I'm using the surface machining, whether it's roughing, sweeping, Z level, advanced finishing, uh, it's automatically going to take into the into account the shape of this uh, dustpan mold. Now, if I wanted to see how the machine is actually going to move, this is where we start taking advantage of the play button in the center of the compass. So if I were to pick on the part operation or manufacturing program and I select play, this is now going to invoke uh, machine kinematics. So if you have a machine in there that knows how it can move and position, this is where you're going to start to see how the machine kinematics come in, come into play. So in this instance, we'll start playing. And you can see that now the machine and the tool and the holder are all here. And you can also see in this example with this holder in place, I'm actually over traveling. So if I had it set to stop on over travel, you would see the over travel happen. You'll also see that because the tool is too long, uh, I actually drug the tool across the part, but let's go ahead and speed this up. And now you can see how the machine is going to interact with the tool paths that are created. So if you have a machine set up with kinematics and you load that in programming, it is exactly the same as everything we've done to this point. The only difference that comes into play is instead of doing the simulation in the actual operation, which just shows the tool going around, if I use the play button in the middle of the compass, that invokes our kinematic movement. So now it's going to look at where the tool change is, where the machine's coming from home. On this, this machine, um, we have home set back here. But you now have the ability to see how the machine's going to simulate. So if I had a fourth axis or a fifth axis or a mill turn, um, I program the part like I normally would. Then I go, I go select where I want to start running the simulation. I hit the play button on the compass. And that's going to invoke machine kinematics. And now I'm doing uh, cutter location validation and seeing if my machine's going to over travel or if there's any issues that run into it. And in your collision detection, you can turn on uh, different types of probing. Like here is dynamic clash. Uh, you can also do machine kinematics and things like that where you can see in real time what's actually going to happen. So for lesson six, it's, it's another short one. Um, but the, the point of this is we use coordinate systems for placing uh, items in the machines or in the fixtures. And then when we program the part, 
what we do if we want to see the machine actually move and react, we use the play button and the compass to invoke our kinematic validation. And with that, that covers our lesson six. Mm -hmm.